I've always gotten asked so many times about my fancy steam iron and I've never had anywhere to recommend you to go because this one's not sold anymore. So when it was new for a new one, I decided it was high time to talk about just what these fancy steam irons, these steam generator irons actually do, what they're good for, will they help you in your sewing, uh, what I look for in one, and then I actually test out this brand new one that I've got to see if it is worth it. <laughs> Hi sewing friends, welcome back. Uh, this is going to be a really interesting video. <laughs> it is, uh, what are we going to talk about? We're talking about these steam irons, these steam generators, these fancy steam irons that you see me use and many other people and you probably even looked at them and thought, what do they do and is it worth it? We are going to talk about all of that. So let's cover off what they actually are, what they do, different functions than say just your regular domestic iron that you're kind of used to, um, why these are like different, and then what I look for in one, what are the requirements that I did look for when I purchased this new one. <laughs> and we're going to test out this new t um, uh, I'll write down what it is as well to see if this one is of use because I've had this uh, model of T-Fowl, um, T-Fowl Easy Pressing, I've had this one for a decade and I love it, absolutely love it and I get asked all of the time where can I get one, like what's it called, I want one, where can I get one, but unfortunately they don't sell this model anymore, which is super sad because I love it, I love it. And as you know, I'm building a second sewing space uh, at my home now. And so part of that is needing one of these because to me, they're totally worth it. And I would never go back to those domestic irons and we'll talk about that in a second. So I needed to get a new one and I wanted to find one that I could actually recommend to you. So vid see you know whether it's worthwhile or not um, purchase as well. So this is my hunt for the perfect uh, steam generator iron, the perfect iron for a home sewist. That's you and me. So. This is what we'll be com um, comparing. So we'll talk first about just what are these fancy steam irons? What do they do? The first thing that you notice is obviously they're built into a big like water tank boiler type thing. So uh, they have a larger capacity so you can have much more steam than your regular sort of domestic iron. So like so much, you know, you usually fill up like this much. This new one, this has one point nine liters compared to that little cup that you might put in the little household iron so a huge amount more so it means less trips filling it up and you get a heap amount of steam they are designed to get steam so you get really good steam a lot of it and without the spitting of water because they're really designed as the name suggests a steam generator to get steam and a lot of these which we'll talk in a minute actually come with the ability to vertically steam so you can use it as a steamer and an iron. So not all models do, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. And of course the other big thing is the big units that they're on here. So they are like built in to this and so it actually provides some stability. So usually, you know, with your home iron, this is the new one, I'm working out the noises, you have to put it on the table, right? And the ironing board. And you can obviously hit yourself very easily. It's always a little bit scary and your ironing board wobbles, right? I'm holding on to this and it can be quite dangerous. Um, and of course, you don't wanna accidentally leave it like this. And so these units are designed that it's hot, it's still on, they actually sit on here and no matter how bad your ironing board's wobbling, it won't fall off and it's a lot more safe and secure, which I really like too. The ease of use of these, because you're ironing a lot in sewing, makes it really useful. Now, what do I look for in one of these? Well, this is the list that I did look for because I just purchased this one. <laughs> one of the things um, you look for is, of course, the steam generation. Now, you can get all technical and these are all measured in some bars of steam, but you'll see in a minute the difference between my very old one and the new one. They work a little bit differently. Uh, and honestly, I was just all, that's all too technical. I just want to know how much steam it gets because this one is actually only very low. It is, it says it's 4.5 bars, whereas this new one is 6.2 bars, but 4.5 even being that low, and you'll see in all the different models that I might talk about in a moment, I always found this was plenty of steam to get me by. Like I did, I was not without enough steam with this. So I didn't really worry about all the science between the, the bars of steam. They will all do way better job than your domestic little home iron. So the 
big thing that I was looking at when I went searching for a new iron, I discovered that most of the irons these days are called something like a one temperature technology and you cannot adjust the temperature of the iron. <laughs> I was absolutely shocked. So it means that they, they, there's no thermostat, what they call a manual thermostat. You can't adjust it at all, there is none. Uh, I was horrified and that's an absolute deal breaker for me. I know what I'm ironing and I know what temperature I want to use and I want to be able to select that. So that was a really, that's absolute um, deal breaker for me and I would have went with other different models but you couldn't adjust the temperature. And so for me, that was an absolute deal breaker and one of the reasons I chose this model. The other feature is the vertical steaming that I was talking about. So you want to be able to actually pick this up and vertically steam uh, and use it as a vertical steamer. So, right? <laughs> so you can uh, use it as just that. And it even, it, um, even if you don't use this for sewing, I recommend it for ironing too because you can iron your dresses, skirts, etc. with a bit of steam, like vertically steaming like that, in about 80% of the time and effort that it does to flat iron it and you get a pretty good job. So for me, it's an absolute like laundry saver being able to vertically steam and this is two in one. It's a vertical steamer and an iron together. So that was definitely the vertical steaming function was one of the things that I was absolutely looking for. What is also good is an eco mode. So you can kind of, I've always enjoyed it on this one. You can turn it down to an eco mode and where it just kind of plots along a little longer when you're using it for say several hours, you can put it on that and just come and go um, as needed is always quite handy, but not necessarily a deal breaker for me. There are a few, there are the features that I looked for. There are a few things that I've noticed in my very short uh, handling with this new one um, that I'll walk you through that are not necessarily features that you'll look for, but maybe just things that I've noticed and pointed out. So let's have a look at this new one to see if it is going to live up to the task, to the challenge. If I had the choice, I would have just bought another one of these because I love it so much. It's been perfect. I had no complaints, nothing. So unfortunately it's not available and I want to be able to give you a better choice too on something that you might be able to purchase too. Now, when I did look, um, I had my list of requirements that I just mentioned. The other requirement uh, was that I wanted it to be made for a, an Australian plug outlet. outlet. <laughs> so I did want something I could recommend to you, but when I looked on Amazon, they're all from the US and they all have US plugs and just being such a high powered item, I didn't want to risk it and have converters and things. I wanted to get something that was made to fit the power that comes out of my wall. So that was something that I went for. Now the T-Fail brand, this one, as I said, I've had for a decade. The only thing that I changed was the boiler cap. Um, once I replaced it and it has been a dream. So I went with another T-Fail again. Okay, comparing to the new one, let's compare. So this old one actually has a boiler. So you'll see it's, it's hot, so I won't undo it but this is an actual boiler cap. You have to screw it on, you pour the water inside, screw the cap on like a boiler. And um, it's great, uh, it's wonderful. It's very hard to fill because you have to get a funnel and fill it over and to uh, clean it, you have to literally like rinse it out, tip the whole unit upside down and tip it out because the water unit is in there. I mean, that didn't bother me too much, but um, they're probably the only things uh, that I mentioned. So on this one, I have a steam control. I can go from more steam to less steam to, e to eco, and I can choose the temperature that I want going from synthetics all the way up to linen. So comparing to the new models and everything I found, this was the only the really one that had a temperature control. Now this temperature only says it goes up to a cotton as the maximum. So I'm curious about the temperature there that it will get to. Uh, in my mind that says that it's going to be a slightly cooler temperature than this one, which might not be so good, but we'll give it a little test and see. And this one has a water tank here that you literally pull out. You can take it to the sink, you fill it up and you push it back in. Now I was very dubious because I really wanted a boiler like this one. So we'll see anyway, but this is how they were all like this. They all just have a water tank and you just plonk it on and off unless you go to professional models or at least anything I could find. So I'm very curious to see how this goes. And it looks like the cleaning on this is much um, easier with a little anti calic um, little thing here that you just pull out and can clean it. So clearly the uh, water refill and the cleaning uh, 
are far easier than this old model. Uh, and you can choose the modes. There is an eco mode and a vertical steaming mode and then just the regular mode. So it'll be interesting to see the difference between them. So let's have a little look. I have had only a little play, as I said, just to get it started and get it sort of worn in a little bit because it did say it would spit water when you first used it. And yes, it did. But um, I've sort of worked that out and given it a bit of use now. So but unfortunately, it still spits some water. So there's water spits through here. Did you hear this pumping? Can you hear that? So to get the steam in this, it obviously draws the water from the tank into a boiler and it keeps like, d -d 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 like squirting water into itself, I guess. And so I was not expecting that noise. And well, I, not, it's not necessarily a problem, but I film tutorials. So that pumping sound, I'm not sure. It's very nice to glide. It's probably heavier than my old one. I do really like the tip of this. It's quite pointed and I can feel already that that would be really good to actually um, poke into little corners and everything as opposed to my old one here. Um, I do think that little pointed tip will be absolutely uh, beautiful. So to give you an idea, this is how my old one steams. You just press the button and it goes. It steam is just there waiting for you. I usually press it and then stop and keep ironing. So um, yeah, the steam is definitely different. This one is delayed. This reminds me more of the feel of a domestic home iron where you kind of press the button and you wait for the steam to build and generate and you keep going, you keep going. It reminds me of that. It was a long time ago that I haven't used one of those. This reminds me of maybe why I liked it to begin with. It's more like an industrial iron where the steam is just there. You press the button and the steam goes. So, you know, much of a muchness, but that's because I'm comparing it to that one. But otherwise it's quite nice. One thing I noticed with these in using them is the actual cord at the back. So this one actually comes off higher back here and so a little bit more flexible. So it means when it hits the board, you're not tugging on it as much. Whereas this one is not quite as high. And so when I get to here, it's actually pulling on the board and you're, you can feel that resistance, um, which is not so nice. Having that high end does make it more usable, particularly if you had like a really big ironing board. And the cord on this one in general is just shorter, of course. So no surprises there though. They probably saved millions of dollars in the manufacturing just by cutting out, you know, this much cord length on all of their cords. So I've just turned it onto ver vertical steaming and I want to give it a go. The same thing, it kind of slowly gives the steam out and it's still steaming when it's there, which is a little disconcerting compared to my old one. It's definitely noisier. Yeah, um, this one did run out of steam. I was vertically steaming and it kind of like spat water a little bit uh, at one stage. So. There is that. Um, I think that because it draws in smaller amounts, but let's just give it a bit more of a try. If you've never vertically steamed before, if you can hang it up from something really high, you can do it standing. Otherwise, really, you'd want to be down here doing this. You just put a little bit of pressure and let it drop and um, press. That's done a really nice job. Actually, it was quite nice to use for the vertical steaming and it's done a quite job. I don't like how it just puffs out steam like that. <laughs> but all in all, and I do like that you have a little light on the top so it's really obvious when it's on. I don't like the fact that it pumps out. Let's give it a little heat test. Uh, I would like to compare with linen and see how hot it gets. So I've got some wrinkly linen seams here and we'll do one each. 
I've turned them up to the maximum temperatures to see if this cotton setting is hot enough to actually iron linen. And what I've done is I've left it on the vertical steaming mode. So we'll see if that gives more or less steam or if I'm just ruining everything entirely. We'll see. So let's have a go. Okay, um, it was very nice to use to press the seam. The linen is still a bit wrinkly, but linen is notorious for that. Um, it didn't feel super hot when I uh, did the little test and I shouldn't do that, I know, but it's what I'm used to with this one. So let's give this one and see if the temperature here is in fact hotter or cooler or is going to make any difference on our linen. That one's hotter. <laughs> um, okay, so having a look at these two, I do feel like this one is um, slightly smoother and this still does have more wrinkles. And doing the unofficial temperature test and just like seeing how hot it was, this one was definitely hotter. I feel like this could be hotter. In comparison, well, in conclusion, is this one my absolute go-to like perfect iron I'm not sure uh, I would say only on the fact that the way that it pumps and creates the steam but then I'm used to industrial irons too and I look for something like that I would say this iron has an experience that is like an upgraded domestic iron in the way that it feels and that it creates steam it feels much more like the iron that you're probably used to which is probably a good thing for most of you and the pumping of the water probably isn't a big deal if you're not uh, videoing, um, you know, making videos, of course. It's very smooth. I really like the, the pointy end. The cord length, I don't think, would be a deal breaker. It has spat a bit of water, which I'm, you know, concerned about. Maybe it will stop. Maybe it won't. Um, but we'll see about that long term. So... All in all, I think I would still want to give it a bit more test long term in actual many garments in different situations. But so far, I would definitely think that it is a good choice for an iron. It's not, it was one of the lower models, so it's not super expensive. Um, and it probably is a really, really good choice uh, for an upgraded version. I still might search around and maybe compare a few more. Tfal, if you're listening, uh, I've got some great ideas on what would make the perfect iron for the home sewist. Let's talk, <laughs> but um, I'll see if the search continues. Leave your comments down below. What iron, what steam generator iron do you use? Please let us know, I'd love to know. And remember, if you're reading through and you found someone's comment useful, give it a like and let them know too, because we are a community here all sharing our knowledge and that's how we all get better at our sewing and all find great products to use, okay? All right, so happy sewing, happy ironing. <laughs> happy sewing, bye. Okay, <laughs> this one ran out of steam <laughs> first. It was spitting water. You can see the difference. This one has like a nice flow. This one is like steam jets. That was quite interesting. And it's still steaming. <laughs>